Violent crime in the streets of Chicago as teens attack tourists and residents with reports of more attacks planned. Joining us now, trial attorney Karen Conti. Karen, good morning to you. You live there in Chicago this past weekend. We saw hundreds of kids and teens swarm the downtown area, attacking all those poor folks on the streets there and destroying property. Some teens were even shot, dozens arrested, arrested there. So tell us what happened. Was there any warning and why aren't more of these teens being held responsible, Karen? Well, apparently it's a social media thing. They all get together on social media and plan these attacks. And the police are just not on top of it. I, I don't know why they should be, and they probably will be in the future. You know, I don't know what's causing this. I, You know, a lot of people talk about not arresting them and not prosecuting them and not having strong laws. But these are things that are very foreign to most of us. Having represented young people uh, my entire life, I, I know that it's not about the laws. It's not about whether they're going to be prosecuted. It's something about maybe their upbringing. It's maybe something dealing with uh, their parents. But, you know, you and I both know that if you get out of your bed at 10 o'clock at night, go downtown on public transportation to violate laws, your parents would know what you're doing. And in this case, obviously, the parents didn't. Well, speaking of which, there is there, there are curfew laws there uh, in Chicago in place. So what responsibility do parents have both criminally and civilly for allowing their children to be out that late and committing these acts of violence? Yeah, we do have a curfew uh, downtown, and the mayor, uh, you know, implemented that for this very reason. But parents are responsible civilly for damages up to about twenty thousand dollars. If you, if it's proven that the kids did something that was willful and malicious, obviously this is willful and malicious. But as far as criminal liability, it's really hard to charge parents for for criminal liability unless they did something reckless. Now, if you're allowing your child out at ten o'clock in violation of curfew, perhaps that would be a, a charge. But you know, there's just it, this. This to me is a bigger problem than just uh, you know arresting people and putting them in jail. This is we have to figure out why this is going on, and and there's got to be some accountability here. Uh, well, and, and I was there, a news anchor there in Chicago for many years. I lived there, and I can't think of a time, Karen, when something like this would have even remotely been a possibility. But what did you make of what the mayor said? I know there is lots of talk about soft on crime policies, but these teens obviously think they can get away with this because they are. Yeah, our, our mayor, our new mayor, said something I think was a little unfortunate, which is basically don't demonize these kids. Well, you know what? I can demonize them. You know, what they did was criminal and was horrible. And really, uh, you know, it doesn't speak well of who they're going to be in the future. Uh, putting that aside, I think, you know, we have to get to the core of it. And again, like, I'm not saying coddle these people. I'm saying, yes, punish them. Yes, prevent it from happening. But but there's something else going on here. These kids are making really, really bad decisions, which does not well for their futures yeah. or our future right and like you said right now social media is a huge problem because they are organizing there's organizations on Facebook on Twitter telling them hey let's do another team takeover this weekend so Chicago is gonna be dealing with this it sounds like uh, via social media for, for some time now uh, I want to talk to you about this other case that's that's in the Supreme Court they heard arguments uh, in a case brought by a postal worker who said he was discriminated against because of his religion since he was required to work on Sunday when uh, is an employer legally required to accommodate a person's religious beliefs the employer uh, cannot uh, cannot discriminate against someone based on their religion. But if that religious belief causes undue hardship to the employer, then the employer does not have to accommodate. So what is undue hardship? And that's always the question. And you saw that in the arguments uh, yesterday. They were batting that around. Like, what is undue hardship? Should there be better laws that are more clear about when the two things collide? You know, your right to have a workplace where people work uh, and, and, and work on, on the days that they're supposed to work and, and people who have legitimate religious beliefs. So I think, you know, I think this is going to be, this is a, a case where there was undue hardship because other people quit, other people complained because they had to work on Sunday. So I think, I think this is a case where the Supreme Court is going to uphold this decision. So from the arguments, you, you think this is the way the court's leaning at this point? I do, and I think the court is going to probably encourage Congress to make clearer laws, you know, that, that set forth standards on when that undue hardship line is crossed. And Congress, you know, really should do that so that all employers and employees know what the rules are. Trial Attorney Karen Conti, great talking to you this morning. Hope you have a great weekend.